Today on Made for the Outdoors, we head to small town Minnesota where we roll out a large scale dock operation. So our pieces are coming together and starting to look like a dock. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Board Review Lodge. Boats get a lot of attention, but docks deserve some credit too. They get you to your boat, they get you deep enough into the lake to do a cannonball. They're pretty much the gateway to the water. Today we're at Hewitt Docks and Lifts where they make one of the classics. We're about to see how the Rolla Dock is made for the outdoors. They might be known for the Rolla Dock, but making things has always ran deep in the Hewitt family. Well, how it got going is I went to school for machinists, and I worked in the city for a couple years as a mechanical technician. That's Larry Hewitt, the small town machinist who started a dock empire over, what else, a game of cards. Playing cards and drinking with one of my buddies, and he had a place out here in one of the lakes, and he needed a decent dock. And uh, we talked about it, and the more we drank, the smarter we got. So we started working. It took us about three months building that dock downtown on the weekends and at nights. And by the end of that summer, we sold 13 docks and about the same number of boat lifts. After that, it was all docks all the time. Larry's son, Troy, remembers those days well. We grew up waking up in the mornings, listening to sewing machines running in our basement. We used to have our canvas department in our basement at home. Things have changed a little since Troy was a kid. Their production facility now spans over 22 acres. We have a wide variety of products just because of the huge area that we cover. We needed to make products that fit those situations instead of a one size fits all. So we have six different docks, we have five different boat lift styles. We build everything right here in Nicollet, Minnesota. But today it's all about the original product, the Rolla Dock and it starts with raw materials. 80% of our product is aluminum coming in the doors. It's the most strongest, lightest weight material available to us as far as putting something together to make it uh, easy for you to use. Thousands of docks require a lot of raw materials. This is just one of three buildings full of mostly aluminum and steel. As you saw this morning on their way in, there was a flatbed truck that brought in raw material to us. So that raw material can be some various lengths. From that, um, we order it specific for the job application and we'll cut it down to the size that we need. There are numerous parts to cut for each dock. One of them is the aluminum angle for the end plate. We're ready to get this party started. Here with Jeff, the shop room supervisor. What is step one of making a dock? Well, step one is sawing the aluminum angle through the automatic saw. Once they're cut, it's time to get punching. Tim has been at Hewitt for 31 years, and it shows. Not everyone would be that comfortable with their hands in that machine. Next, we put our baking skills to the test and cook up some more parts. Making a waffle. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. All right. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Border View Lodge, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Aquarius Home Services, Car Arms, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. 
The docking empire started by Larry Hewitt now rolls on through his family. My father, machinist by trade, he had a friend that uh, had a bad back, wanted a dock, um, needed to make it simple, and made himself a, a dock on wheels. That worked great. The rest is history. <laughs> but the Hewitts keep their friends close by too. Sales manager Chris Shea has known the family his entire life. That dates back to probably early childhood, um, probably in three to four years old. Riding the bicycles, uh, putting on the band-aids, you know, getting in trouble with mom and dad for sure. Chris and Troy may have had a little too much fun growing up, but now it's all business, manufacturing and selling the company's pride and joy, the Rolladoc. The really cool thing is the patented idea is we can span 48 feet on one set of wheels. It's easily adjustable with one crank handle, making uh, you know 140 foot application, uh, going into the water in less than 10 minutes in the spring, and back out of the water in less than 10 minutes and you're back inside in a warm condo. The ease of getting the roller dock in and out of the water is what sets it apart. But to roll with ease, you need quality tires. And like almost every single part they use, Hewitt makes their own right here in Nicollet, Minnesota. We've made our way to the plastics room where all the bumpers and the tires get made, and we're about to make our very own tire. I feel kind of like I'm in science class doing an experiment. Tell us how it's done. Okay, this is just ground up plastic. We weigh it out to 18 pounds. Then we scoop it into here, and then once we get to 18 pounds, we go and change the tire. Man, we might be right on the money. Come on. It doesn't get much more perfect than that. Woo! All right. We're going to grab the bucket, go up over here, and change the tire. All right, let's do it. Right on the hand? Yep. It's kind of like uh, making a waffle. Yep. <laughs> kind of. All right. This is no easy bake oven. It takes a long time to cook up these tires. We're sending it into the oven right now. Forty-five minutes later, our waffle, er, I mean tire, is done. The anticipation! The same process is used to make bumpers and rub rails. Like a big gummy bear. Next, our tires need a place to go. They might be humble, but Hewitt has one of the most sophisticated CNC machines I have ever seen. This machine drills the axles and pivot pipes for the undercarriage. One of the coolest features is that it can machine parts up to 31 feet long. Consider it the Ferrari of CNC machines. In contrast, this next step is done the good old fashioned way. Each rod is meticulously bent by hand. The zigzag rods are then welded to the side frame, again by hand. Some things only a human can do. Others, we leave to robots. So we made it over to robotic welding. We're here with Joe. He's gonna weld the end plate today, correct? Absolutely. We'll start with four of the corner pieces. These will go in, obviously, each corner here. We cut and punched those earlier. Yeah, absolutely. So, so those are our babies. Right from here. <laughs> so then we start with two of our top angles. These ones have holes in it for our rivet screws as we're putting down the decking later. We put in here, looped up against our jigs there. 
Given all the metal parts, you can probably guess what's next. That's right, more welding. So our pieces are coming together and starting to look like a dock. Our dock is shaping up, but the work's not done yet. I'm going up. I'm going up. Find out what this is all about when Made for the Outdoors returns. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by All Seasons Garage Door, Polaris Industries, Driven Coffee, L&M Fleet Supply, and by Warner's Dock. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes, so it's only fitting that the Rolodoc is made here. But lake life isn't just a Midwest thing. Uh, we go out as far as Europe, Australia, Hungary, uh, working with a client right now in New Zealand, you know, trying to figure out what he needs, how much he needs of it, and how we're gonna get it to him. We, we kind of pride ourselves on being very versatile and customizing to a specific application. One of the keys to Hewitt's worldwide success is attention to detail, even when it's something that other companies might overlook. The one thing that we do with ours, unlike others, is we put a lot of extra effort into making our dock quiet and usable, because the last thing you want is to be sitting down on the bench and all of a sudden you hear, you know, footsteps going bang, bang, bang down the dock. So we add in those extra features to silence the dock to make it nice and quiet. A quiet dock means more fish and uninterrupted midday nap. With our dock finished, the final step is to send it to its new loving home. Our Rolla dock is complete. We've made it all the way to shipping. What happens next? Now we need to ship these to a customer in Kakana, Wisconsin. So we need to get these last few sections up on the top of this truck. So I'm gonna need you to strap into this so you have a straight free harness. All right, I'm strapping in, here we go. I'm going up. I'm going up. much but I was up there I watched him supervising good work back in the day we used to actually load outside in all the elements the rain the wind the snow and everything in between um, this facility here has allowed us to start loading inside in a controlled environment we have the two bays in here that we can load literally two trucks at the same time not bad for a company that started in a basement I always say it's pound for dollar, we're gonna outweigh the competition, hands down, number one. And number two, this is a dock that's gonna last you a lifetime, you know, with minimal maintenance. As you can see behind you, we still have one of the original docks from the early 70s. Still standing. Still standing. Awesome. Still standing indeed. Both physical docks and the family tradition have stood the test of time. That's the best thing about working for a family net group. Um, you know, roughly 80 to 90 employees through our season. Uh, we're a very family knit oriented group. Um, we bring in lunch uh, once a month for the employees and uh, we do an awesome Christmas party every year. We're a very nice knit group. Um, family comes first, no matter what. 
With our dock complete and loaded up, our job here at Hewitt is done. It's time to roll out. Hewitt Docks, coming to a shoreline near you. All right, guys, we're out of here. Thank you, see ya. Hope you brought snacks. It's gonna be a long ride. Hey there, I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. And I'm Alexa Score. If you're a fan of Made for the Outdoors and wanna know more about the show, be sure to like us on Facebook. And follow us on Instagram for cool behind the scenes looks at what we're working on. And don't forget, if you've got a show idea, be sure to drop us a note. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Polaris Industries, Otter Tail County, Minnesota, and by Pearson Salted Nut Roll. If cleanliness is next to, well, you know. The perfect real life example sits at the corner of Norwood and South 8. Pretty much, yep. Carla Barr runs Anderson's Dry Cleaners, the spot where stains and drips go to die. Carla would never call this job cool. Most days in the middle of the summer, over 100. Gets even hotter back there. But the other family business. Excuse me, Julie. Way in back. All right, this is the back, all the way. Cool might be an understatement. What we got going on here is we have all of our plastics up on the shelf. That's 16-year-old Kyle Barr, half proprietor of all this. The last three are war bugs, and then the middle is craw tubes, and then the front five are thrashers. All names of fishing baits, a bait business brainstorm by Barr and his younger brother. Oh, I love it. I'd die doing it if I could. Oh, he might. I might. <laughs> to understand is to stop back home. Where the Barr brothers. Uh, these are uh, our golly gold war bugs. Spend a lot of time in the basement. And we got, I think these come in thousand packs. So we got packages all up. Raw baits come by mail in big boxed flats. Take them all these boxes into, into the bag so you guys can use them to fish. So much work, yep. the Bar Brothers needed help. So they phoned a few high school friends. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 20 minutes. <laughs> you put eight in these, right, Troy? They kind of just call. Usually I'm not busy, so then I can just help them. Cole Larkin gets paid not with cold, hard cash, but instead soft, warm baits. Plastics, it helps me restock the tackle box. <laughs> <laughs> Some days. The kids often package their juice baits under the watchful eye of dad. I don't have to wake them up in the morning and tell them to go to work. They, they have the passion, so they just, they do it. We actually have someone down in Florida who's wanting to get some of our baits down there. For now, online sales and the display at the cleaners keep the Bar Brothers in business. When they catch up on packaging and orders. I'm going for the big old bucket mouth, large mouth. They spend time on the water doing what kids like this do. Well, we're product testing. This is the product testing day. <laughs> they get together to do what they call research and development. <laughs> There's a good one. Oh, double. Uh-oh. Oh, Came it off the juice. I just wanted to go. I didn't even have time to clean the water. No. <laughs> I didn't know you owned the babysitting company. <laughs> Makes sense these two would be in the fishing biz. They fish a lot. Plaques and trophies might prove 
that these guys know what they're talking about. This one qualified me for the, for the national championship. In 2015, I won the FLW TBF uh, state championship out on Mille Lacs. They've loved it since they were old enough to hold a rod, and it's all they think about and it's all they want to do. So the next time you wander through Brainerd, stop at the dry cleaner. Mom will wash your clothes, and the kids, they'll try and clean out your wallet. I'm very proud of them. They have taken the bull by the horns, and they are just working so hard day and night. Definitely, there's no two kids that know more about fishing than, than they do, so they're perfect for the job. It's the lure of a high school bait business.